Hey, Turbs. How you doing? You gonna show off your fancy new collar? No, Turbo. Hey, baby, how you doing? There we go. That's a good boy. You like your bells, don't you, Turbo? She thought he didn't like these, and then he came running up to me with them in his mouth this morning, and he wanted to get dressed up and fancy. They're not all that loud, so I doubt they're very annoying, and they don't even work all that well. Hey, what's up, Garden Friends? I was saying they don't work all that well, and I cut myself off. Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, isn't this beautiful? I don't know what it's called. I don't know where it's from. Someone gave it to me as a gift. So shiny. Green holographic table runner, Monstera leaves. Beautiful. That's not the point of the, hey, I got some stuff here. Uh, it says Orchid Gene Lab on the sticker there. I'm pretty sure it's Bloomify on Amazon. I'm sure y'all have seen them before. These went on sale for Black Friday. I've been curious about them. They were cheap enough that I thought I'd order some. We could talk about them. Might be something people are interested in giving away as gifts for the holidays. It is the holidays. I know some outside that might throw people off to usually film indoors, but we're there. It's mid-December, almost mid-December. So what we have here, what they're known for, principle behind what they do is to basically deflask plants that have been tissue cultured into a larger container. And you can grow them out longer inside of a glass globe. There are plenty of ups and downs, pros and cons that go along with this idea. Several things that can go wrong with it. We can talk about all that. For starters, let's go ahead and get this open up. I didn't want to fully unbox it when it showed up a few days ago, but I also didn't have time to film yet. So I popped it open so that they could have light. That's important. There are plants, they do need light. Everything else that's going on with them should be self-sustaining. That's the entire idea here. Typically, you would want to keep them out of direct sunlight like they are right now, but you know, we're outside. This is just for the video. They'll go inside and get filtered light, uh, really indirect light once you get them in there. No, you're probably wondering what's in here, but I want to show off the packaging as best as I could. So like I said, I had to pop this open. There are three different chambers in here that were separated by some little slits of cardboard. Lots of packing peanuts. Not a fan of that, but otherwise, Pretty good packaging. I actually don't even remember which ones I ordered. So this will be a surprise for me as well. I haven't looked at them other than just pulling the stuff off the top and making sure that they were exposed to some light. It's a bit breezy, so I'm gonna have to be careful here with these packing peanuts. Okay, that looks nice. No label, but it does say Bloomify on the bottom. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Print it nicely on the bottom. Ideally, you won't really be looking at the bottom of these all that often, right? You don't want to be turning them upside down. This one right here, you can see it better. I left this wrapped in the bubble wrap <laughs> so that you can get a better idea of how it came. Just a little rubber band holding it together. Nothing special. Okay, that's pretty cute. Little bitty baby Nepenthes. And the last one, very small. Do not have any idea what's in here. I've completely forgotten. Um, that is, <laughs> barely gonna be able to see this. It's a tiny little cactus. I'll get some better footage to put up on the screen for you. That's it, I don't think there's anything else in here. There's a, one of those air packs in there as well. I thought I had ordered four, but maybe I had four in the cart and I narrowed it down to just the three, I think that that must be what happened. That's the teeny tiniest little cactus in here. Don't know what kind it is. A Nepenthes of some sort with an auger in there has been dyed a fun shade of blue. Looks neat. And then this guy, yeah, this lighting's better. You can see this a lot better over here. What the heck is in here? It's got a flower bud and I can see a little bit of purple in there from where there's a flower or I should say was a flower at some point. Uh, okay, I'm actually, I'm missing one. There should also be a sundew in here. There's a Persian violet, that's not the flower. That's the Nepenthes. The Nepenthes in the blue and the cactus. I'm gonna go rummage around the house. There must be a box somewhere that I hadn't opened yet. That's not great. Hopefully if whatever's in there is okay or they just didn't send it, I don't know. It says it was delivered, so it's probably inside somewhere. Well, I don't know. I stuck those down there in the chair so they'd sit in the shade while I was inside looking for them. The tracking number for the sundew says that it was delivered a few days before these three were. But then when you expand on the tracking, it shows these three and not the sundew. So uh, something wonky happened there. I don't know, ordered a new one. It was only $9.99 and there's a 12% off coupon. I don't, don't really know if I should have ordered another one, but we'll find out. It was cheap and I'm mostly curious to see how long these things can live like this. Talking about tissue culture and auger, when you deflask something, meaning that you've put it into the tissue culture process in a petri dish or a jar, however it's being done. Sanitation and keeping things really sterile is extremely important. 
Right in my doorbell. That's gonna go off a lot. There are people here doing construction. Can't turn it off because it's part of the security system. I need to know what's going on. Here, I can put it in, put on vibrate, keep it in my lap. That's probably better. These nutrient augers are a breeding ground for bacteria, molds, fungus, you name it. That's the entire point of these augers, this gel-based material that's inside of these. It's what makes it possible to even grow these plants the way that they are, having that nutrient auger. But again, things have to be sterile. I assume what's going on here is they have their tissue cultured plants, I'm sure in large quantities and larger containers, and then they deflask them into these, which are filled with nutrient auger, one with gravel, one with a dyed auger, and one's just plain old basic auger. Agar, agar, I don't care how you say it. The nutrient gel, based from seaweed. Neat stuff, you can do a lot with it. If the seal isn't perfect inside of these, if that is not a nice strong seal, these will get full of mold. It is one of what I would consider to be probably the largest potential problems with these is that if they aren't sealed properly, you're going to have mold. And then longevity. How long can we grow things in a, a container like this and what's appropriate to grow off in a container like this? There are tons and tons of plants that can be kept in their nutrient auger for a fairly long time, six months to even up to like a year and a half, two years when we're starting to talk about certain types of orchids and things that are slower to get going. The conditions are not going to stay proper forever, right? This Nepenthes in here at some point, that's gonna want more airflow. Same thing with the cactus, right? That's not going to be something I would think that you could keep in agar for very, very long. It's not breathable, but it has nutrients. There's, of course, some oxygen in there, right? They're gonna have a whole system of things recirculating. I don't know how much of that will get with the cactus, but time will tell. We'll find out. One thing I was really curious about with these was, would they come with instructions? Would there be any sort of material or information as to how long you can keep them like this and what to do if certain problems arise? I guess if it's in a sealed system, there's really not much you can do, but there could be a little pamphlet, something included to be like, oh, hey, the plant's turning white. Maybe it's been getting way too much sun. You know, these should not be sitting in the sun like they are right now. I'm keeping an eye on them, making sure to feel them. They're not getting too hot. This is just for the video. Indoors, bright direct light like this, that'll just cook them. People who don't know who are the people who are most likely to order these, right? Because they're just like, oh, look, a plant that I don't have to take care of. I say that loosely may not know that you probably don't want to put this in the sun. I feel like it's fairly common sense, not stick glass globes right in the sun because they'll get hot. But again, there's no information provided to tell anybody anything about what you should do with these, especially when it comes to what to do with them when they outgrow these containers. I was thinking maybe they could talk about some signs some things to look out for to let you know when it's time to go ahead and deflask them, which is not always the easiest thing to do. Maybe their website might have information on this. I don't even know if they have a website. I've always only seen these things on Amazon, but I'll look, I'll put it up here on the screen if there's something like that, some information to let people know what to do in the process of deflasking these because that can be a complicated process depending on the plant. Some are gonna be more sturdy and tough, may not skip a beat. There's a whole different system of things at play once you deflask the plants. They're going to go from this very sterile environment where the roots are growing in a gel to having some sort of soil, some sort of media around those roots that has some grit, some texture. There'll be airflow around the roots and airflow around the plant and much, much, much less humidity. Basically right now they have it real easy and then when you deflask them, that's not the case anymore. So it's important to know what you're doing in that process. For most of these, especially that cactus, if that does well in there, we will see. You probably have several months till that's even something that needs to be worried about. But for me, the things I'll be looking out for, the signs for when it's time to go ahead and deflask these and put them into actual containers. The Nepenthes, probably when it starts to touch the edges of the glass that's in here, which it's not all that far from doing. When that doubles in size, it'll be time to, oh my gosh, it has tiny little pictures. You see the little pictures? Can you see them? Sorry, filming through glass. Not all that easy. If it's not showing up well, I'll make sure to have other things overlaid on the screen so you can have a better look at them, especially because there's condensation in these as well, which is a benefit to the plants, but not, not so much to film in a video and showing you what's going on inside. And I can really see these having a nice niche for some people who maybe, you know, on your desk at work, something like that. You just want something that'll last you several months and take it home and give it a shot, at bumping it up into an actual container. It's a, I, I, I don't know, I have mixed feelings about it. 
I think it's neat, it's cool. When it comes to some of these plants, I can look at them and go, well, this is not how they would prefer to be growing, right? The cactus, especially. That's not ideal. That's not an ideal environment for a cactus. For the Nepenthes as well, they like a lot of airflow. I can see the violet in here. That's probably something that could do well in an environment like this for a fairly long time. And this is also a type of violet that already stays small. So this is more practical ish. You probably get more time out of it. These over here, I guess you get time because might be more slow to grow, especially that tiny little nub of a cactus over there. The Nepenthes, ah, like I said, it's not ideal, but this is how a lot of the Nepenthes that we buy from nurseries, this is how they start their lives, not in something with blue auger in the bottom. I guess you could put methyl in blue in the auger. I doubt that's why this is blue. I highly doubt it. I would imagine that's more than likely just decorative. Yeah, they're neat, not a lot to them, very small. I think it's cool this one has flowers in it. That's a fun thing to have. Let's talk about a terrarium, especially a closed terrarium. Typically when we set up a terrarium, we're trying to set up something that has an ecosystem and an environment where you have beneficial bacterias and fungi and all sorts of critters that can help break things down and decompose things. But because something with an agar down in the bottom, that nutrient, and the propensity to mold with things that are tissue cultured and young and have no immune system. There's probably not a lot going on here as far as a biome is concerned, other than what's naturally just there for the plant. I mean, if we're speaking biology, there's probably a ton of stuff going on here as far as a microbiome is concerned. But as far as things that will be able to break down broken leaves and then that in turn become nutrient for the plants, uh, I don't know. If bacteria and mold starts to grow, the entire thing can be taken over. Now, generally speaking, if something like this were to start getting mold in it, there are a few different things you can do. I think the first thing that most people would probably recommend would be to just let the mold do its thing. Potentially, it's just a little cycle of stuff going on in there and it's going to work itself out. If the seal's broken inside of there though, that may not be the case. It may have to separate it, get the seal broken and spray some peroxide in there and kill off the mold. And then you have to go through a whole process of sterilizing these. And it's a process that most people can't do at home, but well, you can, it's just complicated. It involves bleach and tubs and lots of alcohol, sometimes fire. It'd actually be kind of fun sterilizing your flasks and things for tissue culture. But I doubt that that's something people want to take on when the whole entire idea behind it is low maintenance, low fuss, it's just something you can set out where it gets some light. I don't know, there's no directions. It came with nothing, just cute little jars. And that's going to be my main gripe about this is there should be something as far as the care is concerned for people to refer to when you give these to them, sell them to them. I'm, it's the holidays. I'm thinking of like gifts, right? But if you're just buying these, I think a lot of people would want some information not just a box, right? They could do more there. Otherwise, I thought I'd have a lot more negative to say about it. I really don't. The plants themselves, they look good. They were packaged well. I did forget to mention that when I took the box inside to look for the other one that was missing, there's a heat pack taped to the bottom. They're cool. Wouldn't spend a ton on these, but they were cheap. There were coupons that time of year. And I'm, really, I'm loving these tiny pictures. I don't know how well I'm gonna get showing camera but that really is just stinking adorable. That cactus, that is, that is a complete and total waste of money. What the heck? Come on. I wasn't expecting much with a cactus, but that's ridiculous. <laughs> it's really ridiculous. But hey, maybe it'll last a long time in there. I don't know. There wasn't a lot of point to this. Just I've been curious about these for several years. They've been around for a long time. They went on sale, so I thought, well, let's get them unbox them, talk about them. And here we are. If the sundew shows up in the mail before this video comes out, I'll clip it in here. Uh, otherwise, that's it. That's everything. Comment down below. Say hi. Love talking to everybody. What are your thoughts and opinions on these? Anything you have to add and offer? If you've had these before, your experience with them, put it down below. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Right. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.